Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of On the Horizon. This week I'm going to be talking with my brother Austin Ratliff, who's in charge of our engineering department here at Casper Outdoors. We talk a lot of how do you get in this space as an engineer, as well as our stiller uh, transformation that we went through this last year with the stiller actions. And so this week the episode is going to be actually brought to you by Stiller, and Stiller is proven in the aftermarket bolt action receiver space. And we really hope you enjoy this week's episode, so let's get to it. Awesome. Appreciate you coming in here and hanging with me on this. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little uh, hardcore in here. I think last time I was in here, it was a completely empty room, and now we're we're set up. So pretty cool, so, huh? Yeah. So I mean, that leads that leads off well. Um, you know, tell us about you know most most people don't realize. I guess we started this in a garage, a two car garage, in like 2012, 13 time frame. Yep. yep. Um, tell us. And I think everybody would be interested in knowing what have we done the last year in a new facility and where are we at? And Well, I think um, I was actually thinking about this a lot yesterday because I knew we were coming on this podcast, right? But I don't think people realize uh, how, I'd like call it like redneck ghetto we were <laughs> back in the day, right? <laughs> Um, and so I was thinking about, you know, some of the comments on the, on the production floor and where we are now in regards to, oh, we don't have the adequate paint gun, you know, we don't have a six class four a B oven. Right. <laughs> uh, and I look back at where we were and even the oven, uh, that we had used back in the day, uh, we were using a Harbor Freight paint gun, right? Oh yeah. Uh, we were using, uh, we had a old, what is it? Grizzly safe? What yeah, we found, <laughs> yeah, we found a, well, I think it was Grizzly at, we yeah. got it at Academy. Yeah, and we basically uh, ripped out all the guts on it, and uh, took an old uh, oven stove top and ghetto rigged it, and then uh, redneck rigged it all together. But it worked. It worked <laughs> great. It worked great. That's what I don't think people people understand of uh, the garage shop days and the uh, entrepreneurial type of uh, environment yeah. uh, that Horizon used to be. And, and like I said, there's still some of that that uh, kind of hang around. Yeah. Um, the but, best thing about that oven was if you plugged it into a 220. It got to the exact right temperature, perfect. but if you ran it more than two or three barrels at a time, it caught on fire. Yeah, <laughs> and that's fun. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like I said, that was uh, the the garage days, um, and so it's been interesting to see. I guess over the last uh, you know several years, um, and kind of my time going uh, and working in, in at corporate in China for a little while, and then coming back, uh, I kind of missed that transition period of mm. the old building. Um, to where we are now in the new facility. That's a good um, point. You, yeah, you sort of missed. So there the was this, this like blip, right, that occurred. Um, <laughs> and I think when I when I left to go to Shiner for a little bit, uh, you know, we had you know several employees, and then when I came back, it was a whole host of individuals that you know I had no idea who, <laughs> who they were. <laughs> uh, but it was uh, it's interesting to see the new facility is I mean, it's incredible. Uh, we've got a lot of new uh, gadgets when it comes to the engineering side of things. Um, and into the uh, CMM and, and measurement and inspection uh, world that we, you know, we didn't have. Like we're we're way past the uh, garage shop uh, uh, precision eyeball, as but, I say. <laughs> precision eyeball. But I will say that uh, kind of fun thing about that. I was downstairs at, in the in the gun area, and we had a gun. It was one of the first ones we built. Come back. Um, not for any reason besides he's switching from a Bell and Carlson stock to one of our new carbon oh, okay. stocks. Nice. Awesome. And so it was kind of fun to see the barrel of action and honestly, dude, quality of paint job, the gun still shoots incredible. And so it's kind of fun to see, uh, to see, you know, there to hear, yeah. um, you know, and, and like you talked in between, you know, a couple of Aggie 100 yeah. wins yeah. in there and you actually won, uh, youngest what was it the second year we won, did the aggie 100 you won youngest aggie 100 yeah that was interesting i think it's on my linkedin too so check it out <laughs> check it out um uh, but yeah it, it's it's been a very interesting ride um thus far and i think there's a lot of exciting things going forward especially with stiller and, and whatnot as well so so you know when you're thinking about and i think it's a great you know deal here when, you, when you're thinking about entrepreneurship in this industry you know um what would you recommend to somebody trying to get in it Oh, um, that's an interesting question, especially with uh, all the engineering interviews that we, we've done for the positions we have open, um, because we kind of get that, that question um, fairly often. Um, and, you know, for people who are just starting out, uh, and what I am looking for, at least from the engineering side, is people who are hungry 
uh, they are analytical, um, and, but uh, can take feedback and criticism and iterate uh, both on how, are, how they are thinking and actually from a product development standpoint, right? Because uh, you're going to have mistakes all the way, yeah. every time, and everything's, everything, nothing will be perfect the first time. Absolutely never. Um, and so people who can kind of adapt. This is the difference between engineering and, yeah. and me, sales and marketing. I'm like, it's always perfect the yeah. first time. There's no way we'll miss yeah, this. No chance. Um, and so, you know, individuals who can adapt, uh, be logical in, in uh, how they take the feedback and iterate, I think it can go a long way. Yeah. Uh, whether they're engineering or not. Uh, but to get in this space, I think you have to learn, learn to adapt. Well, one thing I, I think a lot of people are seeing this. Um, one thing I've noticed quite a bit is the, the especially the recent grads that we're interviewing everybody seems to be so much more specialized than what i think people used to be yeah and so it's it's really hard to find uh well-roundedness mm-hmm. um i think that's that's been an interesting thing and i think um hope my engineering team's looking at this but uh <laughs> you know Whenever we are building, like I said, that engineering team that we've got so far, you know, there's been key individuals that I've hired that, you know, have that background of, you know, they're not PEs, right? But they are very, very, very engineering, you know, what your stereotypical kind of kind of individuals, right? <laughs> um, but we also have some people on the team uh, that, you know, sometimes, depending on what the team looks like, I would prefer that, you know, air quoting here redneck farmer uh type individual that can like get it done and that is uh you know fabrication uh savvy and know what a gun is right because yeah. I mean, we have several engineers that are aerospace yeah. right that they've never really touched a gun right they may have uh, messed with rockets but. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> which is which is a little bit different uh but having a well-rounded unified team uh, that kind of have those uh, you know subset of, of um, uh, personalities uh work really really well together yeah no i agree now um so, so talking about kind of the evolution of, of the company was, right? So starting out in the garage, we, we're doing custom guns and really kind of, I always framed it as West Coast chopper style. Yep. And we're still doing some pretty odd custom guns. Yep. Um, I was looking downstairs at some of the stuff. I think there's some more snake skin coming up, uh, which is always, yeah, <laughs> always interesting. To see. interesting. Um, you know, developing iota so you know do you want to kind of take us through the progression here um you know for people who are who've got a company i mean i love i love seeing new people enter the space right mm-hmm. we always laugh for like it's the same 30 people they just work in different you know, areas everybody just gets shuffled around um and i really like the firearm space coming out of the archery space because i feel like the archery was moving really fast. The gun gun space has moved slower, and it's starting to move yeah. faster. So I feel like we're on the front end of that. So you know, people with you know ideas and, and stuff, um, you know, really want to kind of encourage you to you know follow that dream. Make sure you you uh, uh, you know work on your products and, and such there. So yeah. you know, the what I was going to say. Well, we've actually talked about this a little bit in the past, and we've seen it at various shot shows. Is your point in regards to uh, you know we're seeing the firearm industry move faster and faster and faster? Like you mm-hmm. know you know you have that perspective on the bow industry, uh, but we always ask like why is that? Um, and it's interesting to see you know this the AR market go up and down, up and down, up and down, right? And then you have these swings of individuals that you know like crush it in the AR yep. market, right? And then you know hey maybe there's a little downtick here, like which is normal. Yep. Um, and now they're kind of spooling up on the bolt gun space and being a little more creative. Uh, you know, yep. you got that tactical uh, yep. type stuff coming on, <laughs> uh, which is really kind of challenging everybody to, uh, like I said, design and iterate uh, yep. quickly. Um, but yeah, to that point, it's been very interesting to see. I think we'll see a in the next three years. I think we'll see a lot of waves in new development. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's going to be you kind of who's on the on the front end of asking like how do we incorporate some cool things into old technology? Although, I mean, think about it on the on the custom gun side. What are we seeing now, though? Uh, people are wanting, you know, guns that look like what they're, they grew up hunting yeah, with, true, right? True, true, true. And so, you know, really it's been an interesting to see the blend of carbon fiber barrel with a fully wood stock, yep. you know? And that's what's cool about one of our, you know, customs that we started. Oh, what was that? Um, 20... 
13 or so, 14. Uh, maybe it was a little bit later than that, uh, that we started doing the hybrid wood Wood. and resin kind of, uh, carbon fiber, like hybrid stocks. Um, trying to kind of blend that, uh, you know, old school versus versus new school look. But But it's kind of fun. You see that. I think, and I think probably most industries see that, you know, we're like now, you know, nineties pants and two thousands, you know, band shirts are cool again. Right. So it's, (laughs) it's that, it's that kind of, um, you know, recycle and mix, uh, that I think we're seeing in the gun space. And so, you know, out of the custom guns, space you know fast forward to 2014 um uh, we're starting to get in the carbon fiber iota space so mm-hmm. tell me tell me a little bit you know you you had a, a pretty much the a, a single hand in getting iota up yeah. and going and learning carbon fiber how, how did how did that happen <laughs> well let's uh let's not beat around the bush right the IOTA uh, getting it up and, and moving was an absolute mess. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily uh, from business side only, yeah, sure, but uh, uh, literally as well, right? Because <laughs> uh, we started out in the wet layup side of things, really not knowing. We don't know. And right for people now. who don't know what, when we say wet yeah. layup, you know, when we're when you're manufacturing carbon fiber or fiberglass, I mean, yeah. boat holes, anything, you've got kind of two main methods of of manufacturing that part either a you have a dry cloth and you smother it with yeah some sort of resin system on it right basically honey yeah (laughs) (laughs) and then and then it's a giant messy process Mm -hmm. um but probably more common Mm -hmm. um and then you have sort of a pre-impregnated so you get a a giant sticker that already has the stuff bedded into it yeah um and so that's what he's talking to when you talk about the the messiness of wet layup and and like i said we used to have a uh, tool and die shop within within casper companies uh, and so we took some of that information, but like I said, we're not we're not uh, tool makers uh, yeah. from from trade, right? So what does a uh, carbon fiber or you know a stock uh, composite mold look like? We don't know, right? Um, so we have moved a lot uh, since we first started in regards to basically just hollowing out a, a aluminum you know block <laughs> essentially, and you know poking some holes in it and trying to make it work. Uh, but yeah, from, from your perspective, uh, back to the oven comment, even when we first started, right, we had this aluminum tool that was basically just a cavity of a stock with some holes in it, uh, wet layup and resins and fabrics all over the place. Um, and even, uh, even the oven, the curing oven for that, that was essentially, uh, uh, probably shouldn't be talking about some of these things, but, uh, that oven was, uh, uh plywood, wasn't it? Too much, uh, it was a plywood, 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 plywood oven. oven. Yeah. I don't know if that was, uh. <laughs> I don't know when we thought that was a great idea, yeah. but it worked. Hey, it did it work, did work uh, for several years, and then it didn't, and then it worked some more, and then we finally <laughs> finally decided to get rid of it. Yeah, now we've got custom uh, European ovens with yeah. PLCs that yeah. ramp angle. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and that's what's interesting about where we were to where we are now, right? So we did the wet layup resin, uh, or sorry, yeah, wet layup process uh, for, for several years that had the kind of gel coat sponge to look on the outside. Uh, and then we made the decision... Oh, in 2016, 17, maybe, uh, somewhere in there, uh, to try to offer something that was a little bit more robust uh, to the customers um, and, uh, you know, offer an exposed carbon fiber look. Uh, the best way that we, we chose to get both those worlds was through some pre-impregnated fabrics, yep. right? Um, and we've, we've made some pretty bizarre ones, like onesie twosies out of yeah. uh, like Kevlar or like, uh, you know, colored uh, carbon and glass mixes. Uh, but yeah, so so nowadays the process we got much more sophisticated molds, uh, much more sophisticated ovens and and, and uh, control systems within the process, um, uh, and like I said, we're using a much more advanced material nowadays, which is getting yeah. us better product for the end customer. Which and, is interesting because yeah. when you look at the firearm space, like if you're a builder, uh, you know, looking for stocks, yeah, there's really only three or four, you know, maybe four yeah. builders you can kind of get that from. So. You know, it's a it's a it's a process that we were like, oh yeah, we just we just make these, and I think you know it ends up being a lot harder than you think. But you know, I don't think a lot of people realize too that the big guys, you know, most of your big OEMs don't manufacture 100 percent of the parts in house, right. and so, or they lean really heavy outside, but they lean really heavy into injection molded products, yeah. right? Yeah, which is fine. Uh, but you know, to your point, getting a little bit higher, uh, performing, uh, product, you know, you kind of have to go elsewhere. Um, and to your point, like I said, there's, there's three or four, uh, yeah. um, kind of father stock companies. I mean, it's growing, but, yeah. uh, that's, that's where we're at. But shameless plug. If you, if you need a custom, <laughs> if you need a carbon stock 
and you want it custom design, you know, that's really where uh, a lot of your engineer group focuses on. Are you getting ready to build your next bolt action rifle and looking for a receiver? Be sure and check out Stiller Action. Stiller is one of the longest standing, most proven bolt action receiver manufacturers in the space, manufacturing everything from 22 long rifle all the way to 408 shy tax They're making everything right here in the great state of Texas. To learn more, be sure and visit their website at stilleractions.com. And now back to the show. Talk about the engineering team. So we go from, you know, garage and, and no engineering team. To talk yes. about building an engineering team out of those last year. Sure. So in 20, oh, 2021, uh, I guess is whenever I went to, uh, you know, a corporate facility in Shiner. Uh, yeah, for that, most of you who don't know, we've been talking about that uh, some. So around 2015 with Horizon Firearms, we teamed up, merged with Casper yeah. Companies. Mm -hmm. So Casper Companies, 120-year-old fifth-generation company, multiple different conglomerates. Uh, now we kind of operate as Casper Outdoors with all these different outdoor companies underneath that. So yeah. we reference um, corporate, we're really referencing the um, the Shiner facility, which is the 120-year-old facility. Yeah. So Austin yeah. got to spend some time there for a while. <laughs> yeah, for about a, about a year, uh, driving about an hour or so to work every day <laughs> from Seguin. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, in 2021, uh, like I said, we, we took a role there in regards to, uh, you know, building an engineering team for what we pulled out as Casper Outdoors, right? And so Casper Outdoors was the outdoor brands, KWW, Horizon, IOTA, and uh, now Stiller. And Texas Ammo is associated Texas with Ammo, that yep. as well. Um, but what we wanted to do is kind of bring an engineering team together uh, that could service all brands together. Um, and that was a challenge because we, you know, in the past, we have always had, you know, one to two, um, you know, fabrication minded individuals uh, per brand that was kind of do their own yeah. thing. Um, and so over the last year, uh, we've tried to kind of build out some engineering processes and systems in regards to how we operate as a, as a uh, you know, kind of department. How do we service the customers being still a Horizon or IOTA? Um, and we've broken it down uh, through multiple different org charts over the last, uh, last two years uh, with, uh, you know, a design engineering group, a manufacturing engineering group, uh, quality, uh, our programming and tooling department is all, um, kind of within that, uh, same department as well. Uh, and this year we'll be kind of splitting it up a little bit, uh, to have a kind of continuous improvement engineering function that will have a dedicated design engineer, uh, that will be really focused on, you know, reverse engineering and improving our products, both from a quality standpoint and an operation standpoint. Um, and then we'll have an MPD uh, group, which will be a designer, uh, ME, and a um, programmer really focused on new product development, right? Because, uh, you know, once again, let's be real with ourselves. We just acquired Stiller. We've mm -hmm. put a ton of reverse engineering and process improvement uh, steps in place yeah. uh, to kind of balance the production flow out and balance the quality for our customers. Um, and, you know, this year we're really focused on uh, driving uh, that channel, both from a um, new product development for Stiller, IOTA, and, you know, even Horizon with some of this core stuff coming out. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, of course, we have an R&D and robotics uh, team that we're, we're working on developing now uh, to focus on uh, some automation pieces within the business. So. so for, you know, before we leave the kind of carbon fiber composites mm -hmm. space, so for the average shooter, you know, tell me about like if, if I was to pick an Echo stock, why why is that Echo stock going to matter to me as a shooter? Uh, or really, I mean, not just an IOTA stock, but if I want to upgrade from a plastic factory stock, you know, what benefits am I actually getting? Yeah. So let's talk about uh, I, my favorite one is like the let's, let's pick on uh, the Tika stocks for a little bit, right? <laughs> um, and so in my opinion, one of the best factory action. I'm sure some people would disagree or, uh, <laughs> there'll also be a, a little subset that are going to be amped up. Um, but, uh, the Tika stocks have a extremely smooth action. Um, uh, they shoot fairly well for a factory stock or a factory, uh, firearm, but the stock and the bottom metal, you yeah. might as well just throw it away. <laughs> like it's basically, uh, yeah, Tupperware, right? Um, but which I mean, to be fair, uh, on their side, like when you're hitting price, points, yeah, of course, you got to. I mean, that's the best to. place to cut, right? And if I was, you know, to go and buy a factory gun, I'm 
no, shameless plug. How would that's probably where I would go yeah. uh, for the most part. Uh, the recoil like system's strange uh, compared to everybody else, but uh, other than that, they're like the action smoothness is out of yeah. control. Uh, but anyways, back to why go with the composite stock uh, is for rigidity and repeatability uh, for the most so part. So explain, break that down to the to the layman shooter sure, sure, here. Sure. So what is rigidity? Uh, so it's it's you know how much that stock is going to flex whenever you're you know putting pressure on it. Are you whenever you're loading on like a sandbag or whatnot? Is the uh, you know barrel channel going to flex and, and touch? And you're not going to have a free floated barrel anymore. Whenever you fire, is your barrel placement and going to be somewhere different? And you're going to have once again, you're not going to be free floated. Uh, and so all those things can be addressed with a little bit more robust uh, build when it comes to a stock. Uh, in addition to their extra features, uh, you know, the you know factory stocks have become a long, came a long way uh, over the last few years as well. But for the most part, you typically get additional features, whether that be integrated uh, recoil lug, or not recoil lug, integrated uh, uh, picatinny rail at the front of your stock, uh, whether it be a you know harsher negative comb, a different heel that kind of make it a little bit more repeatable for the uh, end consumer uh, to take a, a same shot every time yep. um, and not get jacked up by recoil every time because the comb <laughs> is actually inverted and you have this massive cheek wheel, right? Yep. Um, uh, and you can make some adjustments uh, on the grip section that, you know, you don't get from a from some yep. uh, factory stocks, right? Which is hard. I mean, you know, a lot of times you're trying to hit the mass market. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's the hardest thing with with the custom stock world is that's why you see even us trying to, to build and create more models and more features because everybody holds their rifle different. But fundamentally, you know, you're looking for, can I get a rigid stock? And, uh, oh, shoot, that's the timer. <laughs> All right, so here you're I'll kicking me off or what? Yeah, here's, here's what we're going to do. Oh, okay. So this is our 22 Creedmoor segment. Okay. So here we're going to do, because the, the 22 Creedmoor, known as kind of a wildcat round, okay. super fast, something that we pioneered here, we've got our lightning round. 22 questions, random here. You haven't seen these. Okay. And we're just going to rapid fire I through. I can't wait. You do can't... I have a time on how fast I need no, to do them? No, you don't. Okay. You don't. We'll All see right. where this leads. So what's your favorite animal to hunt? Oh, favorite animal? Um, coyotes, by okay. far. Or Why? coyotes, I guess, as some people would uh, would say it. Why is that? Uh, it's just, it's unpredictable. It's a little bit more adrenaline driven, in my opinion. Um, you know, like I said, you can go out and you can, you can shoot a white tail. You can, you know, do some other more guided hunts, which is fine. Yep. Uh, but for me, I like the uh, kind of sporadic, like, like in it, uh, kind of haunt it. Kind don't of right don't it. disagree. What's yeah. your favorite caliber? Uh, six five Creed. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. I know twenty two is fine. fantastic. Twenty two is great. That's fine. Um, uh, but you so know, shoot. Five. So when you're calling those coyotes, what's your favorite call? What's your favorite sound to use? <laughs> favorite call? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we uh, well, brand we use Fox Pro Forever. Everything, right? Yep. Uh, favorite call. The challenge is always always interesting okay. to, get, to get some stuff, like a little, uh, little challenge yeah, out some, there. Some okay. Feedback. Yeah, yeah. What's the coolest gear that you've seen lately? Doesn't have to be hunting, but what's the coolest product you've seen lately? Coolest product. Uh, there's a lot of things at uh, Shot Show in 2023 uh, that were interesting. Um, there were some very unique takes on like a, a bull pump, uh, hmm. bolt action kind of chassis that yeah. actually did a trigger well. I can't remember the name of the company, or I would put a plug in here. Yeah, um, I'm interesting. At- I'm I'm personally very intrigued by the, the uh, bullpup bull yes. concept, especially with the suppressors. Yes. Um, so we may we may have to play in <laughs> that area next. Yep. What's your favorite fast food restaurant? Uh, Taco Bell, hands down. Oh, hands down. Yeah. I, Cheesy gordita crunch, <laughs> no spicy ranch, Diablo sauce. It's best. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What's your favorite trophy? Favorite trophy? Yeah. Um, favorite trophy. It doesn't have to be actually an animal trophy. It could be an actual trophy <laughs> trophy. Now that I think about that. No, question. no, no. Uh, the the white tail. Uh, not to get like sentimental, bit here back here. But uh, one of our first times, first trophy we had, mm. you took me on uh, yeah. at our granddaughter's place. Um, and so I think that's probably the favorite one that I've got. Dude, call that. It was a. I remember saying eight point. Called that deer up with one of those cans. It was the first oh, year it. that Primos yeah, yeah. came out with the bleat can, and it yeah. actually worked. Yeah. Um, Beach or mountains? Uh, mountains, hands down. God, everybody says mountains. I totally agree. See, I don't like the sand. No. <laughs> uh, European or shoulder mounts? Uh, shoulders. Okay. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, one survival item you would take with you on a hunt? Oh, one survival item? Yeah. Uh, um, maybe some flint or steel, something okay. to make a fire with. Keep telling everybody. I'm, I'm shamelessly plugging 
Um, uh, and I'm not getting paid for this, but the the uh, uh, phone scope pyro putty stuff's amazing. Oh, it's, it's very much amazing. <laughs> uh, how would you describe your hunting style in three words? Um, uh, fast paced, and but but lazy at the same time. Fast that paced, sense? lazy. That's why I said coyotes, dude. You got to get in there, <laughs> call them up, and then it's done. You're going. What <laughs> favorite camo pattern? Uh, gap. Yeah, well, I, I, that's not a bad one. That's classic. Bad one. Favorite sports team? Uh, Dallas Cowboys. And and Texas A&M. Aggies. Better be the be. Both disappointing to watch. They are both of them. Um, very similar. <laughs> <laughs> but we're hopeful. We're yes. very hopeful. Uh, what's one thing in your hunting bag that doesn't belong there? Um, so in the uh, drag bag that I have, uh, that has that six five cream on it. I've got a bunch of miscellaneous, this is going to sound terrible, miscellaneous t- ammo grains in there. It's like, hey, am I shooting 129s today? Am I shooting, you know what I mean? It's just a mixed bag. You just pull it out and roll with it. Under- <laughs> understandable. <laughs> um, spotting scope or binoculars? Um, binos. Hmm, I have a hard time looking through, uh, Man, through the spotting scope. That's one question that I'm always surprised people pick binos. Yeah. I'm such a spotting scope guy myself. Favorite hunting snack? Um, who gushers probably? Oh, you can't. Yeah, or, or, old hey, school. Dude, the Scooby Snacks, those little, little, little tiny ones. You can't go wrong with that, man. Those are good. I love you some Scooby Snacks. <laughs> uh, solo or guided hunts? We spoke to this um, a little earlier. Man, it depends. Um, I like solo hunts, but uh, how to say this? It's not. It's not really a guided hunt. Solo hunts, but with a group of individuals. Like okay. When you go spotlighting, right? You got your got your buddies with you. Uh, That's fair. Um, is is the best. So a group. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, however you want to word that. Yeah. <laughs> Hand loads or factory ammo? Factory. Yeah. Like I said, back to the lazy. I hear you. I understand. <laughs> uh, what animal would you be? What animal would mm-hmm. I be? That's a, I don't know, I think I've ever sat and thought about that. Uh, maybe, maybe a bobcat. Bobcat. Oh, cool, they're fast, pretty cool. agile. You know, side tangent on bobcat, and I think it just showed up on the horizon. If not, I could probably post it to horizon. Um, your, remember when we shot with one of the first 322 Creedmoors, we went to Satterwhite's yeah. and we shot, I've never seen this before ever, called in a bobcat, Austin shoots this bobcat, we go pick the bobcat up and it has a vole. Yeah locked jawed in its mouth and yeah. so uh have a picture of austin holding this bobcat with the vole still in his mouth so he had he had picked up a snack and then came into the call it was the craziest thing i've ever seen and that actually i think that that photo it must have been uh like i said it came up on my facebook like one of the anniversary things yep. you know i mean uh just the other day i saw that it's like that it was like uh creed more number three yeah um what is your favorite wild game dish Ooh, uh, wild game dish. That's interesting. Uh, it's not really a dish, but any sort of wild game jerky. I'm mm. all, all about it. I, do I don't like it. making it, but when you make it, <laughs> all about it. Uh, it is kind of a pain to yes, make that. What's yes. the last book you've read? <laughs> uh, and it has to be uh, something in regards to Casper Company is business related. Okay. Uh, I can't remember what it is. Um, a lean turnaround. It's got to be lean, lean yeah, lean turnaround. <laughs> or who took my cheese? Uh, what's who, the, who what's moved the other? My cheese. Who moved my cheese? So, yeah, it's the same, same, right? It's funny. Can, camelback <laughs> or Nalgene? Uh, camelback. Oh, you're it, the only person yeah. so far that has said that. Anytime we go hiking, that's what I got. I always. I don't know how you clean them. You just, you don't. <laughs> you just take it. And always our last question in our 22 question round is, have you shot the 22 Creedmoor? Yeah, of course. Of we course. just talked about that. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks for listening to On the Horizon podcast. Of course, we can't go a full episode without talking about Horizon Firearms. So when you're looking for your next custom rifle, be sure and check us out at horizonfirearms.com. We look forward to doing business with you. Now, back to the show. So talking about Stiller. Okay. Right. So uh, for for everybody who knows or doesn't know, Stiller really was the first clone action company out there. So meaning, you know, the the guys that took the Remington 700 footprint and made it a lot better, made it way more consistent. Uh, you know, Jerry Stiller did a really good job. That company's been around. Since, I'm gonna say the early 90s probably. Yeah. Um, I should know that, but sure. I don't. Um, and then, you know, so kind of our mantra going forward has been proven. So that company was acquired. We acquired the company from the person who acquired it. Um, and so we've had that company now about a year. Yeah, a year, year and a few months, yeah. So you hit on it earlier, but tell us really what 
I mean, you know, you know, we're being very transparent with everybody kind of in the space. I mean, it was really kind of a mess that we're, we're really rebuilding. I say a mess operationally, not necessarily on the product side. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about what this last year with Stillers looked oh, like. Oh, man. Uh, it's been one thing after another and kind of peeling back that onion, but it's been good. Uh, and what I mean by that with, you know, trying to, without trying to go into too many uh, side tangents is that, you know, when we initially acquired it and moved everything, um, it was essentially a complete relearning of what Stiller offers. Cause like, unfortunately, you know, we didn't, we didn't bring anybody besides, uh, Reggie which, yeah. uh, on, uh, with the move. And so, yeah, so we moved that facility from Garland, Texas to Shiner, Texas, um, you know, which is about a five, six hour move with all the different machines, um, into our facility at corporate. Yeah. And so there, there was some legacy, you know, whether it be legacy programs, legacy drawing packs, um, and within that, you know, kind of time frame from, you know, when Jerry had it, uh, to when the other individual had it to now, when, now that we have it, um, you just don't know what has been changed, whether it be, you know, what rev are we on? What are we actually making? Uh, is it right? Uh, and, and I guess the, one of the more fundamental questions is what does good look like, uh, both from operation standpoint and for the end customer, right? Yeah. Um, and so over the last year, we have been dedicating almost all of the engineering time that we have in regards to reverse engineering that, understanding what the programs are, why they're like that, can we adjust the speeds of it, what tooling are we changing, can we open up tolerances, do we need to tighten tolerances, what are the codings? Like it's just been a nonstop yeah. reverse engineering project. And, also, um, and, that, and I think that speaks to, like we talked about, one thing, if, you know, I may uh, we'll talk about this here, you know, when you go back and look at, at uh, starting a company, you know, it's like, oh, well, people always say, well, what was one thing you would have changed? And I think that you see that a lot of times, like, you know, no fault of their own, that, that Stiller was essentially iterating as they were going oh, yeah. without keeping yeah. the ribs. Everything was in the machines, um, and so it makes it very difficult to learn yeah. that. Yeah, and like I said, there was some legacy legacy um, uh, kind of breadcrumbs along the way, right? <laughs> uh, which which helped quite a bit. And of course, Jerry has been a phenomenal resource, and you know we want to make sure that we do his his name yeah right, uh, which has always been really important for us. Uh, but like I said, this this whole year has been complete reverse engineering, making sure that we have the quality and the speed of delivery, which I think we're we're close on, kind of. A, getting over that hump yep. uh, to our end customer to get back to where, you know, back to where it needed to be. I, mean, I think, and, and just being real honest, I think if you took a new stiller, uh, you know, uh, Shiner made receiver uh, and you compared it, you know, back with the Wiley manufactured actions, we're back where the stillers should be. Uh, I think the tolerances, uh, you know, of course, part of it's like equipment. I mean, mm-hmm. we've got some pretty awesome equipment now that we can see actually what those interfaces look like, um, you know, talking talking yeah. 3d screens yeah. and um and, and yeah on that note we'll expand on that a little bit um so for instance when we were going through the uh 338 um and um uh, you know the the shy text that we're looking at um uh, you know we don't have solid files of a lot of those right like jerry killed it old school style and you know programmed <laughs> it uh and or you know he had a different software that uh we're not we're not running um, and so we took, uh, you know, we got a you know brand new 3D scanner. Uh, it holds plus or minus, I think, nine tenths. Um, so plenty uh, yeah. for reference uh, geometry. And so, like I said, we took you know, a subset of uh, parts, both from, uh, we tried to get everything from Wiley as we could uh, and actually run some demo parts that we were on the production floor as well. When we, say, like said, when we say from Wiley, I want to clarify that yeah. is, Wiley, Texas is where Stiller originated. Um, and so basically taking product that Jerry himself had manufactured yep. mm-hmm. uh, and getting reference geometry from 100%. there. And like I said, we before we uh, fully get the green light uh, into operations, right, on certain subsets of product, it's like I said, we would we would scan a Wiley, we'd ma- manufacture a product, and then do a you know a comparison between the two, and make sure that we had a representative product, um, and that you know when we were setting tolerances and, and doing testing, uh, that we were hitting what we needed to be. Yeah. Um, same thing on the E-Tree side of things. Same thing on the wire EDM onboarding. All of that was uh, you know validated yeah. going forward. When you mentioned the shot techs and the three three eights, I mean that's been an interesting thing this year. Um, yeah, I don't think people realize just the the Ukraine uh, uh, stuff and how much the interest that's put to quotes and bids for people building 3D. Yeah, it's, it's been crazy. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then really on Stiller, 
you know, still are kind of owns the ELR space. So mm-hmm. like if you're a, you know, extreme long range shooter and you're doing the two mile, three mile competitions, um, that's been, that's been kind of fun to get to learn. You know, that's, that's not, you know, from a horizons uh, perspective, that's not our game. Uh, but the, the clientele has been really neat to learn those yeah. and, and learn well, from those guys. I would love to get, uh, you know, more involved in that space and, and, and grow in that space. In addition to, like, to your point, Hey, we kind of, have a subset that we own, right? I yeah. want to get back and, you know, own the Inch 350 kind of uh, Rim Designer 7, 700 style yeah. uh, bolt action and, and, you know, kind of go back to that. So without giving too much away, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> to prod at you a little bit here. Mm-hmm. You know, what, uh, looking at the next couple of years yeah. with the engineering team, um, you know, can you talk about any of the products you guys are working on or can you, like, give me some categories a little bit? Yeah. Um, so we actually, I mean, we just came uh, out of a new product development meeting um, here, um, and like I said, there's some futuristic products that no one is offering that we, you know, we're going to be tackling, whether that be a 24 or 25 project, probably likely, um, but for the stuff coming this year uh, and that we're targeting for this year's SHOT Show, of course, you look at uh, different companies and you look at their kind of product offerings in terms of features, yeah. right? Um, and so we got to get to to that point uh, in tandem to kind of going all out on uh, some very interesting, um, uh, how's this, whether it be through new uh, new designs, new material offerings, whatever that might yeah. be. Um, we got to get to a, a certain feature set, whether that be lightweight, right? Uh, yeah. Whether that be, you know, two-piece, three-piece style bolt handles, whether it be integrated rail, recoil lug, uh, you know, getting to a solid uh, product offering, I think, is, is yeah, what, no, you, what, makes, you, what you'll see. What you yeah, see it, makes, it makes sense. I mean, yeah. you know, and that, that's been the most unique uh unique thing about the way that organically you know, we started talking uh, when we first started talking we were talking about you know starting it in the garage and then starting iota and i think that's been the interesting thing about organically having these various different brands all together is that you know on the horizon side we kind of touch one particular customer mm-hmm. and learn sort of what they need or what they want and that helps you know drive some of you know stiller's future development um, you know, as well as Stiller now has this other subset of customers that are also, you know, building rifles and stuff for customers. It's same thing with IOTA. And so we're seeing, uh, excuse me, we're seeing a lot more of the market than I think just your average, yes. you know, that sounded bad, just another receiver company is not necessarily seeing all the facets we're right. seeing. Same thing as another stock company is not seeing all the different pieces. Right. And so it's 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 unique to offer them all separate, but all yeah. together kind of at the same and, time. And uh, I think I, I think I mentioned this the um, you know in our uh, MPD meeting is I would love new product to, development. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, is that. All the, all the engineering code. <laughs> yeah, all of our acronyms. Uh, <laughs> I would enjoy understanding more uh, from our customer perspective yeah. what product offerings they want to see first. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, I mentioned it. Like, hey, can we can we come up with some sort of uh, beta program or voice a customer? You know, you know, submittals for yeah. hey, hey, you really need to integrate a real. Hey, I want a um, 120 MOA rail for some ungodly reason right yeah. like stuff like that i would love to you know try to set some of that stuff up so, so shameless plug i'm gonna stop you here because we didn't intend for this to go this way but uh, if you're listening to this um you know send us an email at, yeah. her, at um probably sales at horizon firearms let us know kind of what you're thinking um if you're watching this on youtube or one of our other deals while you're picking the subscribe button making sure you're subscribing to this <laughs> podcast comment down below if you've got something cool um or at least a category of something that you're seeing in the space let us know yeah so yeah i think that'd be fantastic like i said because most of our what we you know whenever stiller looks at it or whenever iota looks at it our customer a lot of times uh that's driving some of the product development is Horizon. Yep. Um, and Horizon's always been very, uh, you know, forward thinking in regards to, you know, some crazy things that we've done. So yeah. they've been a good customer to push us on the IOTA side. Uh, but like I said, I'd, I'd love to know more from, from customers yeah. on what they want. So kind of uh, last section here, and then we'll roll into sort of our uh, final question I've got that I'm not going to tell okay. you about. But um, if I'm an engine, if I'm in the engineering, of course, like I know uh, you guys are super involved right now. One of the cool projects, can you talk at all about the Capstone yeah. project? Yeah, yeah. 
tell me what they are, but right, right, right. So on the you know we partnered and looking to you know also do internships and stuff like that going forward. Um, but we have partnered with Texas A&M's uh, engineering department, their MMET uh, specifically. Uh, Which stands for, for what? Different. Oh gosh, mechanical. Uh, you're gonna put me on spot. Dude. Mechanical manufacturing engineering yep. program. Engineering technology. Engineering technology. Okay. Nailed it. Right. <laughs> um, uh, and like I said, we're sponsoring uh, two different um, uh, capstone projects this year uh, related to the firearm space. That's cool. Yeah, it's been very interesting. And like I said, the the students. Uh, you know, we we outlined the proposed sponsorship projects, and then the students basically write an essay and proposals to be a part of different projects. Right. That's cool. And I just want to shameless plug that we were the top two sought offer, uh, sought after projects. Out That's of the group. awesome. Yeah. Well, it shows you, it shows Amazon, you that your like uh, your conservative Texas A and M <laughs> engineering students Killing still it. still do like guns. Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. So. We can see that already. Yep. So what do those projects look like? Um, and so uh, I'll touch a little bit about it. One of them is focused around, uh, once again, the new product development on kind of like trying to push the students on like a chassis um, that has unique features in regards to how they collapse. Um, we'll kind of see how that goes. Um, and the, the other uh, project is more engineering data driven. Uh, from a testing standpoint, right? Cool. Uh, and so we, you know, either do shot testing, uh, we do in-house, uh, or we send out uh, bolts and actions to get pressure tested, whatever it might be, uh, to fatigue tested. Um, you know, we're challenging the students to build a kind of rig hmm. uh, for fatigue analysis on uh, both stocks and action bodies. Yeah, I guess you don't really think about that. Like when you're going to test <laughs> firearms and yeah. when am ammunition, um, you know, is a scarce resource. It's very difficult to continue to test, <laughs> exactly. test firearms. And, so. you know, trying to log that data and understand how far can we really push some of the designs? How far can we really push uh, some material adjustments and in, in skeletonizing different products? Yeah. Who knows? That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, that's a very yeah. good point. So, you know, wrapping up, if I, if I am an engineering student or, yeah. or an engineer period, and I really, you know, I, I grew up, I like the outdoor space. I really want to be involved in the outdoor space. Any words of wisdom that you've got in terms of um, classes or approaches or software or things that I should be focusing my time yeah. on? Yeah, so like I said, I'm I'm very different than anybody else probably when it comes to engineering space. Cause, like, I'm not an engineer, right? Right. Um, and what I mentioned in the very beginning is – it is more important to me that you have the right mindset and experiences and, and kind of where you want to go uh, than it'd be like, oh, yeah, I took a structures course. Uh, what, don't get me wrong. It's very important for certain yeah, subsets, yeah. right, and certain tasks. Uh, but uh, the mental model in regards to how you approach a problem is, is more important to me. Um, and so adapting with uh, individuals' feedback is by far the most important thing in growing as an individual. Um, and if you are interested, you can always email HR at uh, Casper, Casper Companies, yeah. CasperCompanies.com. Uh, K-A-S-P-A-R. K-A-R, yes. <laughs> um, and we also have what we, what we coined uh, the Elite Engineering Program, so you can also look at that. Uh, there's a flyer and everything uh, of, cool. of the different things that we're looking for. Um, so you can take a look at that and we'll kind of go from there. Cool. Because we're so always, always hiring. <laughs> always, yeah. Always. I, think, I, think, I think last I heard we have 40-something job breaks-ish. Yes, ish. always. So um, last, last question that I'm asking everybody. Huh? When you think about what is on the horizon for you, so whether that is personal, whether that's in the business, whether that's product-wise, you know, what is on the horizon? Mm. I'm going to go the, the company route. Um, hmm. On the horizon for me and for our engineering team as a whole is I want to have uh, very clearly defined uh, product offerings, right? And I want to be able that to say that our operation is absolutely crushing it um, and in shipping quality product to the customer. Cool. Um, and so I think that's, you know, where our focus has been the last year, um, you know, in terms of narrow focus. And I think we're going to, you know, continue on that this year. And like I said, I want to be able to walk out there and have, you know, let's call it. 10x the amount of people that we have out there and i want to be in another building yeah um, and really crank it through some uh volume 
Cool. No, that's great. And I, I selfishly love being able to go to a, a, a firearm store and actually see your, yeah, see your, your product. product. Yeah, it's pretty cool. 100%. So, well, man, Austin, I appreciate it. And guys, thanks again for listening to these, this episode of On the Horizon. And be sure, click below, like and subscribe. It's very important to us to know kind of what you think about our podcast and for us to be able to connect with you. And until next time, we'll catch you later. Mm-hmm.